In Greek mythology, Prometheus defied the gods by stealing fire and giving it to humanity. As a punishment, Zeus sentenced him to eternal torment for his transgression. He was bound to a rock where each day an eagle was sent to feed on his liver. The liver would grow back overnight and the eagle was sent again the next day to feed again on his liver, and so and so. Liver regeneration was confirmed by science, but for other organs, like the brain in particular, scientists thought that it was fixed and incapable of regeneration. Back then, scientists were wrong. In 1962, Altman presented the first proof of adult neurogenesis in the cerebral cortex. It was great news in my field of research where I focus on stroke. Stroke is a very serious and frequent neurological disorder. It occurs every two seconds in the world. Every two seconds, somebody in the world suffers from ischemic stroke and for stroke in any type. So, just as I said, stroke has many types. And the most frequent one is called ischemic stroke, where the blood supply to the brain is interrupted by a clot, causing sensory motor and cognitive impairments. Actually, stroke is a leading cause of acquired disability worldwide. Over two-thirds of stroke patients leave the hospital with a permanent disability. The only two treatments available for ischemic stroke are the restoration of the blood supply to the brain, either by administrating a drug that will induce the lysis of the clot, this therapy is called thrombolysis, or by a surgical operation consisting of removing mechanically the clot from the artery, which is called thrombectomy. However, these therapies have several second secondary effects, technical limitations, and a very narrow time window. For these reasons, only a few patients can benefit from these therapies. And the only option, option left for the other patients is a functional rehabilitation, which could take weeks and even years to reduce just a bit their disabilities. This lack of treatment for ischemic stroke underlies the urge to develop new therapies, therapies based on neuroprotective agents. A neuroprotective agent is a drug that reduces the ischemic stroke lesion and improves the functional behavior and reduces the disability that is induced by stroke. Over decades, scientists tried to develop over a thousand neuroprotective drugs that were tested in a preclinical stage on rodents and uh, other animals that model this uh, pathology. And from these thousand drugs, only 200 were tested on humans, meaning in clinical trials. And the number of clinical trials that were successful to treat ischemic stroke was zero. Today, there is no neuroprotective agent available to treat ischemic stroke. This treatment focused mainly on the brain cells. So, in our laboratory, we took a step back to see the bigger picture. And instead of focusing on the brain cells, we focused on the extracellular matrix, which means the environment of the brain cells. <coughs> the extracellular matrix forms the scaffold of a tissue. In this case, the extracellular matrix forms the scaffold of the brain tissue. It is composed of several micromolecules, like the collagen, that you all know it, but other micromolecules, like the heparin sulfate. This heparin sulfate can bind growth factors secreted from the surrounding cells, protect them from degradation, and make them available for 
the other surrounding cells, meaning that the heparin sulfate can participate to cell communication and tissue function. When stroke occurs, this extracellular matrix is destroyed. How? Cell, when stroke occurs, cells die. An inflammatory response is triggered, and enzymes are activated. Enzymes that will destroy this extracellular matrix. They will destroy the heparin sulfate, and finally, they will destroy the growth factors, meaning that when stroke occurs, cell communication is interrupted, and the tissue function is altered, and thereby the tissue repair is altered, which may cause the permanent disabilities in stroke patients. So, our hypothesis was the use of a, a heparin sulfate mimetic called RGTA. RGTA for regenerating agent, which I depicted here in green. Just like the natural heparin sulfate, RGTA can bind collagen molecules and forms a real scaffold of the tissue. Moreover, RGTA can bind growth factors, make them available for the surrounding cells, and then protect them from enzyme degradation. This way, RGTA can, pa can participate to tissue repair. To test our hypothesis, we used an ischemic a rat, an ischemic stroke, a model of ischemic stroke in rats. So after the induction of ischemic stroke in rats, we administer the RGTA to investigate its neuroprotective effects. As I told you before, ischemic stroke induces disabilities in patients. The same disabilities were seen in our stroke model, meaning our rats. So we performed a battery of behavioral tests to evaluate these uh, sensory motor deficits. And what we saw is that the RGTA treated animal performed better at this sensory motor behavior test than the control animals, meaning that the RGTA reduces the disabilities and enhances the functional recovery of our animals. Now that we have seen a better performance of these animals, the question is, how does it work? So, we used an MRI to see what is happening inside the brain of these animals and to measure the volume of the ischemic lesion. And the results show that the RGTA decreased by nearly 50%, which is quite huge, the volume of the ischemic lesion in these animals, both at the acute stage of the pathology, but also at the chronic stage of ischemic stroke. So with these results, RGTA shows a neuroprotective effect. But the question is, how RGTA works? What are the mechanisms behind this neuroprotection? So, as scientists, and to confirm all the cliches about scientists, we used microscopes to see deep inside the brain. And oh, to have a look of what is happening to the brain tissue. And the first observation was that in control animals, the brain tissue seems literally destroyed. It is seen, it is huge. Oh. Compared to the RGTA treated animals, when we can see that the, this agent protects the tissue from the ischemic stroke. Since the RGTA targets the extracellular matrix, we sought to investigate what is happening to this extracellular matrix. So we took other microscopes, more powerful, to have a look even deeper inside the brain tissue. So we stained the heparin sulfate into these brain tissues, here depicted in green. And what we can see is that in control animals, 
the heparin sulfate seems disorganized, destroyed, and there is no network like a real extracellular matrix. On the contrary, the RGTA-treated animals have much more heparin sulfate which are connected and forming a real network, a real tissue scaffold for the brain tissue. Associated to these results, to this protection of the extracellular matrix, we evaluated the number of neurons that are generated after ischemic stroke. And we can see that treated animals with RGTA have a higher number of neurons in their cerebral cortex, meaning that RGTA increases what we call neurogenesis, which could explain, at least in part, why these RGTA-treated animals perform better at the behavioral tests that we've seen earlier. All these data show that RGTA is a promising candidate to be a neuroprotective agent. Our hope one day is that we can translate this therapy from rodents to human patients, reducing their ischemic lesions, reducing their disabilities, and allowing, allowing them to live their life perhaps as if stroke never happened before. Last but not least, this RGTA therapy could be of a great interest for Zeus himself, so as he can add another torment to punish even more severely Prometheus for his outrageous transgression. Finally, I would like to thank all my, my research team at Servoxy and all our collaborators, without whom any of this project would have been possible. Thank you very much for your attention.